What's good, y'all? It's Drew here, back with another collab. So today we have someone uh, special that you guys are in the Discord, y'all might know about. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hey guys, I call myself basically anime, and basically, well, basically, I just have a discussion about anime. Yeah, you came to me with the collab, and the first thing I thought of was a Shibuya vs. Cullen Games, considering that JJK being one of the, probably the most hottest manga out there right now, at least when shown in. Real quick, before we start, between the two, not not even talk about quality. I mean, obviously the quality will have a, a point in this, but what do you what is your what is your favorite of the two arcs? That's what I'll ask you the first thing. I don't man, know, man, because I reread the Shibuya arc this week for this video. And I don't know if just because yeah. I just recently read it that I love it so much. It's just that when I think about Shibuya, I think about a classic peak shown in arc. And the Colin Games is more of a, I wouldn't say setup arc. It's kind of like a build-up arc to that big final arc, especially what happened with the last chapter. We already know who's out. We already know what he's about to do. So I say that Calling Games is more of a hype build-up arc than I don't think it was intended to carry the same impact that Shibuya did. That's what I'm saying. So okay. I will safely say Shibuya might be my favorite among the two. I mean, we don't technically the Calling Games is not officially over, but we got to the point where I think it's safe to talk about it. But I say Shibuya probably might be my favorite of the two but i think the color game still got its pointers in there for me it's hard like i will i i mean every time i talk about jdk the color games i always make this comment and people sometimes get on me but uh i've always i kind of felt like the color games is a little confusing so i don't know if that yeah, takes it into definitely, account definitely this is not even to, to refute from the shibuya arc because the shibuya arc i'm not gonna lie a lot of shit was happening like he definitely on me like it was just it felt like every five or ten chapters some crazy shit happened yeah, I was it's, saying it's earlier with the whole confusing thing I mentioned earlier, but I don't think the colon game is something that you can sit down and read at all at one sitting, like the Shibuya arc. I feel like the yeah. Shibuya arc was more of a story. You can follow along. Not everything's happening at the same time. It's more something that you can easily follow through. And the colon game is more of like, well, I don't want to say fights and information dumps because I don't want to be too broad and do a disservice to the arc, but it's something along those yeah. lines. You know what I'm saying? But we're going to get into it yeah but honestly with that we can jump into the first section so we're gonna split this up uh guess what we, we can go in the order that's already in so the first section we're gonna compare we're gonna compare the shibuya arc and the Cullen games uh basically the plot section on that so we're gonna look at like the overall thing of it so i mean we can honestly like pick so it's, it's two arcs so we can each go one so you want to do like the shibuya or you, what do you definitely I, 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 I can do the yeah i bet that um honestly i think shibuya kind of takes the the cake with the plot definitely the color game did have a great plot i would say but again i wouldn't say lack substance but it was mainly fights and the color games or the shibuya arc i feel like it painted more of a story we saw fights we saw emotional scenes we saw foreshadowing it kind of just tied everything we've seen over jjk's past what like 70 80 chapters at the point into one mega arc we saw different characters come in. We saw epic fights. And I know that's technically other sections, but I think it kind of sums up all into the plot of the series. Um, and obviously there was big buildup. I, I think that's something that Cullen Games kind of lacked. I mean, it was just straight back to back yeah. fights. And the Shibuya arc, you could tell there was a gradual increase in the hype. And then when it finally hits the peak, I mean, I mean, I guess we can spoil and talk about it. But at first the arc was more of like, well, you could tell something was about to go down, but obviously no one suspected Gojo was about to get sealed. The villains talked about it, but at yeah. that point, it was Gojo. And I feel like that arc also solidified it was Gojo. I was reading the beginning of the arc yeah. earlier. <laughs> no I mean, it's Gojo. And I, I didn't think too highly of Gojo. I, I read the arc like two years ago, so I wasn't remembering too much. But I was reading it, and I saw the Gojo versus the Special Great Curses fight. And I was like, I remember some of this, but not a lot of this. And then when I read it... yeah. After I was done, I was like, this is Gojo. You know, especially Yeah, Gojo's like Gojo's him for sure. Yeah, especially with the recent chapters, we see Gojo coming back. Obviously, I'm hype. Obviously, you no know, god damn. But like now that I'm thinking about it, this is Gojo that's coming back. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I yeah. saw the the Gojo versus for, the um, the curse the curse spirit. Uh, I'm saying it wrong, but, but you know, the four main guys on the curse spirit side. And yeah, that was an amazing fight an amazing fight like that fight could have been the peak of another smaller arc and it would have been fine and we got this at the beginning of the Shibuya arc so it was already off to a great start we get into it further 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 we see some smaller fights we see Yuji Megumi versus the 
um pa i don't know his exact name the the sh i don't know the proper term but the imp but yeah the one with the inverse curse tech oh you're talking about from the uh okay oh, okay okay yeah 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 and then we see yuji versus the grasshopper curse we see megumi versus well he assisted um maki kento nanami narabitsa versus dagon we saw toji get in there was a gradual increase it didn't just start out as this is peak we're getting into it we're getting into the fights this was fights with substance yeah. these were it was a story we could see so many different characters how their storylines resolved every character it felt like we were seeing everything at once but it was layered it was definitely layered. yeah and to yeah i was gonna say to add to your point i feel like looking at like the I guess I, we, i'll go into like the shibuya and then calling games but for the mm -hmm. shibuya arc i feel like it started off like slow in the not like slow when people say slow they think of like and is it a bad it in a bad way mm -hmm. but, like it was it's it was his own contained to contain story because i feel like when the the arc began had uh what we thought was uh so what we thought was basically ghetto at the, the time yeah which is really kenjaku and he was like yeah i'm gonna seal gojo like i have this plan because uh, like you said up to this point what we understood from gojo is gojo's the best and i think we later yeah. we had just passed the gojo like past arc so we it's really hit in our head where it's like yo like are you i think it was uh, some gojo jjk has some cool ass phrases i think one of the quotes is like are you the best because you're satori gojo or you're satori gojo because you're the best yeah, I remember it's like that one. shit like they want to put in our mind he's that guy so much where it's like him getting sealed really puts into perspective like oh shit like we are in trouble right like i think even the arc begins with we, we find out that because they were talking about a traitor we see the traitor amongst you know we see what he does right we uh -huh. have the traitor yeah and we have like Nanami ends up dying. It's like, oh shit. Well, what the hell? Yeah. Your bar. I mean, till this point, she's been dead. Like things are just like it's like stuff is just happening. I feel like just looking at the overall like plot, just looking at it as a story, I think it surpasses the Culling Games in that. Whereas like kind of what you said, the Culling Games, I think feels like it. It feels very. It feels like it's we're still waiting for everything to pop, right? Yeah. With uh, you have like the Utah stuff. Utah. Uh, he's in the culling games and stuff and like it's like okay you just like we we're anticipating you to fight you to fighting kenjaku for instance we we're anticipating it. yeah like we're anticipating gojo while and out we're in, it's still like a lot of anticipation and i feel like because of that it's honestly a little unfair but shibuya is like i think it's an ending arc in that sense whereas mm -hmm. culling games like you said is kind of an introduction arc so i would say i'm gonna i'm gonna have to give shibuya arc that like the edge in terms of plot so. yeah for sure and i don't want to say this because obviously we have the gojo backstory arc but i definitely think shibuya might have been the first time i actually realized gojo was that guy because we actually saw him fight uh, yeah yeah that domain yeah. expansion of 0.2 seconds i have the panel pulled up right here yeah that's it's just jeez man yeah, that, that, that shit is hard but yeah and like honestly yeah my fault what were you about to say um yeah i was just i'm gonna ask you if you want to talk about the calling games but get off your point yeah uh it's like I mean, to me, I'm like, yo, thinking about because you said like you didn't think Gojo was that. I mean, you obviously thought Gojo was hard, but Gojo wasn't that guy. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie. From when the show, like, I always thought Gojo was that guy in that sense. So to me, the Shibuya arc of Gojo being sealed, I think that's what made it was like, what the like you know what I'm saying? Obviously, yeah, Go yeah. like to your point, Gojo had that fight where he was like, it's like he was fighting all the special great spirits, all the special great curses, and he's like. And he says some shit like, "Oh, uh, I'm taking care of you first. And you have the like, panel where he like he kills one of the special grades, and he has the other, he has like the the kill special grade like head in his hand. Yeah, and it's like what the fuck. Really Gojo's that like, it's really the wall. insane. Like, the color games I think is really really good, but I just think that in terms of plot, I guess this kind of goes to peak. But we'll touch touch upon that more later. I think even just in terms of like entertaining standpoint of like the plot, like interest, like the interest and all that, I gotta give it to Shibuya kind of overall for the plot. So. I definitely think the Cullen games, it almost feels like separate arcs with each fight because you have a different yeah. location, different characters. The characters are not much intertwingled, obviously it's different colonies. So I wouldn't yeah. say it has a bad plot, but it doesn't definitely feel like one mega plot like Shibuya. Like Shibuya was like the nuclear warhead of all the build up we've been getting so far. So I definitely think Shibuya takes the cake. But when it comes to plot with Cullen games, I mean, it's not necessarily bad. I don't think I wouldn't call it bad but it just definitely feels like separate plots like each fight is a different checkpoint in the culling games like the battle royale yeah 
Uh, I guess you, you covered the beginning of plots. So I'll, I'll go to fights. And I, people know me. Yeah, I love fights. So I'm not going to lie. This is like a three, a big uh, 180. Because when talking about fights, I'm going to be very honest with you. I think the fights, are, the calling games are just too OC. Like, I think it's clear. Like, yeah, I, I think we probably me. should. Yeah, we should probably drop it towards the end. But a fight that I really, really liked is when Maki and Kama were fighting together. And Definitely. they were fighting against like. We're fighting against not I think it's Naya, not uh, no, Noya, Naya, Naya, the best, Naya, Naya. Like, like you said, there was an arc be between the two, where we basically get to see Maki fully unleashed, right? Yeah, and we get this whole, you know, all the deposition about how twins in the cursed uh, realm are and stuff like that. And we get that, and it's just like, okay, well, she's that, she's that, like that nigga, she's that guy. Even <laughs> yeah. even in that arc. Like she gets this thing where she basically gets a comparison to Toji Zenin, right? Then we a little bit later we see she's fighting. She's really like, I guess what people kind of say is that physically, physically she had like the, the same power as Toji, but she didn't have that dog in her. She didn't have that mentality, right? Okay, I was seeing a lot fight, of different things with that, and I, I think it got yeah. out of pocket. I saw some takes about testosterone, and I told you got more. <laughs> it was getting out of pocket, bro. It was, but definitely that fight, that fight definitely showed her, showed people who she was. Yeah. Like, I guess that's my point. Where it's just like, like the color game fights are just literally OC. We just, we see hands at a level of, of shit we've never seen in JJK to that point. And it's just, it's a lot of great fights. We see a yeah. lot of people going crazy. We see Yuta, we see Toji. Well, not Toji, but we see basically Toji and Maki, right? We see Ma like Maki's crazy ability. It's just a lot of stuff that's happening. And I think even when you look at the, sh like the Shibuya arc, the, like the, the arc is amazing. But I don't think the Shibuya arc fights were really crazy in the sense of that. But like, what do you like? What do you what are some of your favorite fights in the Shibuya arc? We can talk about that first. I was also going to pander towards the side of the Cullen games because honestly, Shibuya takes the cake with the plot. But the Cullen games, honestly, they get was like, screw the plot. You're going to get some confusing stuff. Let's just go crazy with the fights. You know what I'm saying? If this arc yeah, is going to be sure, memor sure. memorable, it's going to be for the fight. So um, we have fights like Yuki versus Kenjaku. I think that fight carried a lot of impact. Honestly, was my, I think it's the best fight of the arc. And my favorite fight would be Hikari versus Kashimo. But um, yeah, more about the I didn't. I, I somehow people are going to kill me for that. I didn't even talk about that. But yeah, um, but uh, more about the the Shibuya fights. I obviously think the color game fights take the cake. I mean, it's an arc center on fighting. It's a battle royale. I think Shibuya is more of a story which included great fights, but the Culling Games is more of great fights with minor story. Um, but okay. the Shibuya fights, Yuji versus Intodo versus Mahito, obviously, I think was what the peak of the arc. I think that's safe to say. Yeah, I'm trying to think about the fights. Uh, let me pull it up real quick. We had Magoo. That was that was that was one of my that was one of my favorite fights for sure. I think. When did you say that the, like the peak was uh Migami versus Toji or Sukuna versus Gojo or Jogo? I think those are people. Honestly, sad. Um, I think oh, Sukuna you know, versus Jogo fights. was one of the peaks, but I think when it came to the absolute Yuji side versus Mahito side, I think that peak. I think I don't want to say it peaked at the end because it definitely didn't peak at the end. Like Sukuna versus Jogo was insane. Sukuna's yeah, rampage was insane. Stuff. But I definitely think the story it came into just came to who's winning this. Yuji, Mahito, good versus evil. Obviously, it didn't end up going that way because Kenjaku got involved. But I would definitely say that Yuji versus Mahito fight or Yuji and Toto versus Mahito fight was definitely the peak of the arc. Or yeah, I, say, I, 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 I can I can agree. Arc. I can see that. Yeah. Um, other fights like Toji. Toji versus Dagon was amazing. Well, it's more of all Toji. We got to see that interaction between Megumi versus Toji. And again, that wasn't much of a fight, which goes into my point. Shibuya is not really an arc where you, it's like you're going to know it for the fighting. You're more going to know it of the storylines. Again, 60, 70, 80 chapters of just build up and you just nuclear all the storylines into one build big arc. I think that's what Shibuya is remember, memorable for is the story, the plot. Um, But yeah, fights... Toji versus Dagon before you had the Megumi, Maki, Nabito, Kento versus Dagon. Um, yeah. Go, yeah. That was a tough fight. Yeah, definitely, definitely amazing. I like Megumi's domain expression in that. Um, but um, yeah, they had fights, but I think calling games take it. They weren't, I don't, yeah, I don't think they were that hard, honestly. But yeah. a, a fight that we somehow all, uh, for the, sh this is for, sh uh, for calling games, we somehow. Uh, missed and this is like really really new so i guess that's kind of the point mm -hmm. sugura versus uh yurizo yurizo 
Uh, man, yeah. I wasn't feeling that too he, much. He wasn't fucking with it. I mean, yeah, well, it, it, it was like, why not, why not? bro, it's like he's just teasing us. Like, just give us the Hayden backstory arc already. It's like he just keeps giving us all these hay and error. We get a hair and error, special grade type fight. I'm like, give us the backstory, man. They're talking about what? The six, I'm probably saying wrong, the six void generals here, the five empty warriors here, just little tidbits of the hay and error arc. I think we all want the backstory arc. But yeah, Sukuna versus Yorozu, I think I was still high off the fact that Sukuna was there. And we're just going to jump into a Sukuna fight that quick. Um, Definitely, I wouldn't. When I think about clan game fights, I honestly wouldn't place Sukuna vs. Yorozu in my on my radar. But I mean it was a good okay. fight nonetheless. Mm. Okay, I, I can see that. Uh I just feel like it was uh, especially with like I think in terms of just us learning about the abilities, like we got to see more Su uh Sukuna kind of fighting. Yeah. We got to see more of like, kind of the backstory. I, I I see the point of that. I just think it's just yes to the point of like the overall culling games for the fighting. It's just a lot of like a lot of stuff, right? Yeah, just gash. Uh, Hakari versus Kashimo, like in that fight was a, I thought a fight where they they reference a couple abilities where I'm like, damn, when that where that come from? But the fight in general, that's like a top tier JJK fight. Definitely, and it's like damn, like that that shit was hard, right? We I we we see a couple Utah fights. I think I, I still feel like we uh didn't we get like the Utah three way fight? Didn't we like not fully see that all the way, right? No, mistaken? we were able to see it all the way, and it was amazing. Like okay. when I think about fight rankings, um, I honestly don't know how I'd place Hakari versus Kashima over Utah's fight or Utah's fight over it because it was definitely an amazing fight. As of right now, this is like that's the peak of JJK fights to me, at least right now. For real arc by arc i think the calling games have the best top tier fights oh Who's yeah wanna, definitely yeah. but let's say yeah. yuji and toto versus mahita were to occur not i'm not gonna say it's gonna occur in the calling games but how would you match up that fight with the calling games fights you think they just wash it completely or has some standing which one yuji and you said yuji and who yuji and toto versus mahito oh where ranks up against the uh the calling game fights fight, yeah. i'm not gonna lie that fight was hard to me again i and it's unfortunate because they kind of hold Toto because Toto died. But I love they like, didn't die, Toto's but, fighting. Yeah. Not die. I'm tweaking. I'm saying not yeah. die, but like his like his he lost his uh his hands, right? So he yeah. can't do a boogie woogie anymore. I said die, but it's just because I'm not gonna lie, Shibuya people was just die. We see Toto and Yuji, and obviously, like the to the plot, we see Toto. Toto's you know, I'm not gonna say number one sensei in JJK, but he's a great older brother for Yuji, and we see how he pulls him out of the darkness and whatnot. And like the way Toto fights. And I give Giga a lot of credit. When Toto's in a battle, especially when it's like a 2v1 battle, which is what we saw. We saw this before, prior early in like the anime with him and Yuji. And he makes that like Toto makes the fights with him so much more interesting. And like I think that aspect of like, you know, the boogie woogie ability where it's like, okay, I clap, you know, you know, we know the ability, right? Yeah, like, yeah. The whole switch, especially the switcheroo. But like there is layers to the switcheroo. So because of that, it makes the fight super interesting. And obviously the Mahito, the way his power moves, like his like moveset works it's also it makes it's it makes the fight very very strategic in that sense right because it's like well toto it's like well mihito can one one shot basically he can one shot anyone but yuji right yeah but toto with his ability it's like it's like you know almost like russian roulette like it's hard to kind of to touch him or like you know what i'm saying so it, it's like a big like cat and mouse kind of game and then you throw you know obviously yuji is the person that that is unaffected by like i said uh affected by Mahito's abilities it makes that that fight that that's up there i think that it's better than a lot of uh calling game fights at least in my opinion um i just want to talk because you mentioned Toto's technique a lot i don't want to go too deep but i honestly see Toto's curse technique as if best if not the it's one of the best if not the best of the jujutsu kaisen curse techniques just because it oh, has sure. that Easily. complicated or complication or just variability to the fights obviously it's not like something like jogos just fire explosiveness obviously we get to yeah. see some of the more intricacy into the jjk fights because of his curse technique but it's obviously not something like hikari's curse technique that we have to read a little bit we have to grasp it it's just a switch but yeah something as small as switching can turn the fights upside down it, yeah just ask that exactly intricacy vibe i just love from jjk without overdoing it like some of the color game stuff but yeah definitely there's some shout outs to some of the color game fights yuki versus kenjaku yuki and chozo versus kenjaku yuji versus higurama um yuta had that four-way deadlock a three-way deadlock hakari versus kashimo again my favorite fight of the arc just because 
we saw some crazy action between the two like i just didn't want it yeah. to end the hand-to-hand -hand, the back and forth brawl is her car gonna hit another domain expansion unlimited curse energy this guy and props to kashimo because when he found out that this dude is practically unkillable he could have easily waited it out he could have ran a little bit but he said screw this i'm going full in like you unkillable i'm gonna kill you so definitely yeah. i think the con games all gas if that arc is known for anything it should be known for the gas I had in his fights but yeah i think calling game takes the cake easily yeah and to your point on like the toto like I, I i do think that toto's ability like you said gave a good blend of like comp uh like it, it, it like made the fights more complicated and more complex without making it oc and i think to a degree like i think a car versus kashimo is probably a better fight like easily I think that that fight had that aspect of where I read, I'm like, this shit, like, you ever read, you ever see like a fight where you're like, this, this shit is crazy, but I don't really know what's going on. I feel like at times, I know I was like, yo, what's going on in terms of like the abilities and stuff. But like the total fight, it adds that, it added that calm, like the, the, the complexity, you know, making the, like, like it makes it more, it's more complicated, like that you said, than like Joe goes, oh, I make fire. Yeah. Or even Megami. Megami has cool, like, he's, he summons cool spirits and whatnot, but. Yeah. Air but, kind of, some, a lot of the spirits are kind of like basic to your point yeah but yeah i think that's all for the clone game fights obviously we got to talk about the characters in the fights which is the next subject um yeah i think shibuya takes the cake with the characters not gonna lie and the characters yeah um yeah okay you i guess you want you want to introduce like the the shibuya characters and what characters we get we seen in, in shibuya well, like I said, it was a mega nuclear arc of just all the storylines before. So we got to see majority of the current cast. Or I wouldn't say current cast because we kind of got a new cast with the Cullen Games. Kind of like two different series. But with the Shibuya yeah, arc, sure. obviously we got to see Gojo, the Disaster Curse Spirits, Yuji, his crew with the kids. The Kyoto kids came in in the end. We got to see a lot of the more teachers and a lot of their abilities. I think it was the first time we saw Mei Mei's ability. Um, Kusakabe, the swordsman that taught me, Miwa, yeah, Miwa. Um, we got to see yeah. some of Ghetto's old crew from JDK Zero. Um, but I don't think I wouldn't say it's just that the sheer amount of characters makes it better than the Cullen games is what we were able to do with the mm -hmm. characters because I feel like the Cullen games took like a group of what 10 12 characters, information dumping each of them, information dump each, information dump. With the Shibuya arc, we got slight touches at each of these characters' storylines, the way they act. Yeah. Um, oh, definitely about the writing. I think we could talk about the characters' writing in this. Definitely, it should be a text of K. Yeah. Now, obviously, the Cullen games, you got to see a lot of the characters' motivations, or I would say a lot of their inner moments. Like the Maki fight, that's a perfect example. We got to see Maki's journey yeah. to becoming the physically strongest and rivaling the Toji. And I definitely think that's something that we need to point out with the Shibuya games, but I think Shibuya kind of did that 10 times over with stuff like Yuji, his journey throughout the arc. My gosh. I mean, this dude just- Yeah, yeah I think- like, Yeah. My fault. I, I didn't want to cut you off. I guess kind of like what you were saying, I think Shibuya and characters, I'd say like what you were saying, it, it's it's like night and day. Cause for instance, uh, it's unfortunate cause no, no bar kind of ends up like, she's not dead, but she kind of gets like, cut off in the arc booted out the like, story. obviously she's in most of yeah she's she's been booted out like but you know maybe we'll see her a little bit later but right now she's been out but i think between looking at the other two main characters which are migami and yuji like their character development and their, their their progress was insane right so we see you see later on in the in the club games the effects of what happens in this arc from yuji right where yuji thinks he's a cog we see all that stuff we see yuji's character we see this nigga's character get broken right because he sees nanami and he's like i think nanami's like it's all up to you yeah yeah, yeah definitely. and obara she dies and like until Toto pulls up that nigga yuji was in he was in despair like he was he was you know he was done yeah it was, was insane Megami. just yeah. reading it and i actually thought because i kind of forgot some things but i saw yuji build himself back up from the sukuna's rampage and i thought oh well, this is yuji you know he's about to go crazy he's the yuji we all know and love and then nobara dies in front of him he built up yeah, all that resolve, that was crazy. and he was double shattered. Come to your point, not even just Nanami and Nobara dying. Yuji kind of having to get over, like, damn, uh, Sukuna was just kind of using my body just now, and he was working shit up, like that whole aspect, right? Why look at that, cities, and yeah, just taking out cities, doing wild shit, and then you look at Megami. We 
as the audience know that Toji's his father. Uh -huh. So we kind of interact and we see that. We see those cool character moments. And we see like just Megan be kind of doing like he's in like the heat of battle. And like I think he summons, I don't I don't know if it's does he was it Dogon? What was the, the name of the uh the crazy spirit that he Maharaga. Ma yeah, Maharaga. Like that, like that shit. And like we see like I mean this he's in like a light like the Call Games is like not the Call Games, the Shibuya arc is like a life or death almost war arc type shit where it's like Definitely. yo like we have to do what you know what i'm saying and yeah. we see megan he's like okay well i can't we can't beat this guy but i'm gonna summon the spirit that we might be able to beat later on and obviously like he gets lucky because sukuna basically leaves whatever he's doing and basically saves megami but it's still like the thing where we just we see megami he's in his freaking bag right now that's Definitely. kind of the whole thing with that i so mean it's just, it's went, just it was amazing to see. face to face with toji himself and obviously toji did kill yeah. himself but like the fact you managed to last against toji was amazing but yeah more to megumi's character development i think we definitely saw someone who came out a better person a better more experienced yeah. fighter i think before the arc megumi was getting beat up a lot and he kind of was still yeah. getting beat up yeah, in the shibuya cool. arc i mean he was you know with the toji thing but i think we finally saw him i think there was a quote from him where kento said i hope you're not planning to stay in the domain that he just opened up for them to escape in the dagon's domain expansion and he says i have learned or something like that i'm not going to throw away my life and i think that has been a yeah. change in megumi how to be more of a competent and efficient sorcerer and how to just live for himself now obviously he kind of did the ultimate suicide move when he summoned maharaga but i think he really didn't have any options and his, I don't think yeah. his debt was a meaningless one. Obviously, he said, oh, Yuji, I'm passing the torch to you. But definitely, I think we got to see a more resolved and more refined Mugumi come out of this arc. But um, yeah, um, what other... I don't think any other characters had any major developments. I mean, obviously, no bar I mean, got booted out. Yeah, no bar had her thing. Uh, she uh, She's a blunt now, but we, she had her thing. I'm trying to think. Uh, With Mahito. I do like what they did. Yeah, Mahito. I think Mahito got his character resolved, right? Mm -hmm. this thing where we kind of uh a lot of people even talk about how he's one of the best shonen villains ever because of the comparison between him and yuji they're very like you know they're like polar opposites i think right because yuji's all about like i want to save people for saving sake right and me just like well i want to basically kill people for killing sake and it's kind of like that whole aspect we get that i personally love what they did for toto's character uh we're going to talk about the club games as well but uh toto has always kind of been like he he's not like the sensei because i think the sensei is gojo yeah. he's not even the secondary sensei because i think the secondary sensei is nanami yeah he's one of that big brother yeah he's that that big brother where it's like he's he's gonna be like yo like get get your head in the game kid and, and like we see that you know perfectly when he basically he's the one who gets yuji out of like his rut and it's like okay we see that and like it, it, i think that like kind of cements his character and obviously like he he doesn't give up his hands for for yuji but it's like obviously he like he knew the kind of danger he would be in for fighting uh Mahito. against mahito so yeah that, yeah. that happened uh i, I think that's think, oh and i'll yeah what you, what i you definitely think toto i didn't talk about it earlier but i definitely think he had the i wouldn't say i think he played the perfect role for his character definitely yeah for he sure he came there he was the only one of the kyoto kids that came there at first he came there helped pick yuji the main character back up and he fulfilled his role in helping yuji beat mahito i think i honestly would be okay with not seeing toto again even though i want to see him so bad but i feel like yeah finish off perfectly his, his character's done yeah yeah and also he doesn't have like i think i think also with that especially with him losing his hands it's kind of like there's not much you know what I'm saying? there's not much for bro to do yeah in that sense like he i think he lost his hands i don't know if i wouldn't say if it's the nerf thing but he him losing his hands it's like uh he's perfectly nerfed or he's not it's not like he's like ojo he's not like he didn't need to be nerfed he's in a state where he can't provide much like it's kind of like like letting the, fu the future generation kind of handle things and he can't really he's no longer the big that. asset he used to be that's the whole thing i think i mean that, i'm pretty the boogie woogie i'm pretty yeah i'm pretty confident there was like a statement in a data book i believe where it said that the night of the curse parade i don't know the exact night but the night that ghetto the original ghetto attacked tojo had Todo had handled, I don't know if it was grade one or special grade. I'm assuming it was grade one. He had handled a lot of grade ones by himself without using the curse technique. So obviously the guy is pretty strong. You know, he's buff for a reason. But um definitely I don't think <laughs> buff for a reason. Yeah, you know, I I don't think that <coughs> honestly, I think if he entered the calling games, the bro is dying. You know what I'm saying? I yeah, that's that's my point. Like yeah. he, he can't 
that boogie woogie like we saw against the two people i think the, the two times he fought with yuji we saw how how important especially with mito we saw how important boogie woogie is if he doesn't have boogie woogie he's a blood that's just kind of where i'm at with him I love yeah him. definitely obviously i don't see him going against akuna kenjaku even rame um but he's not the only character to get booed out the story we kind of had a new cast of characters which we're going to talk about the culling games um yes sir either you leveled up or you were left behind you know what i'm saying you leveled up <laughs> yeah for sure. with the shibuya arc we had so much different characters and either you were a part of this new power scale of jjk i talked about it in another video i did but either you were part of this new power scale of jjk or past grade one we have guys like or female sorry like maki hakari yuta if you weren't at least touching that realm or surface we're probably yeah. not too much of you you know what i'm saying introduced through a whole new cast of characters who matured maki definitely matured Mugumi definitely matured yuji definitely matured we see new characters new older characters like akari and i saw this i keep seeing this one teeth pop up on my timeline about I'm, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with the naruto sasuke recovery arc the arc that turns the arc that turned boys to men i kind of see what they did with the calling game characters and i kind of see that in the same light they used to be children now yeah they're guys going against the strongest of the strongest on the villain side but what were you saying for the Shibuya arc, we had it was a clear difference between like the young guys and like great even great one uh curses was like oh shit. Uh great one sorcerer was tough. Like wasn't isn't Nanami? I think Nanami was special. Nanami great, was great right? one. Was he, great? he was great one. He was great, right, right. Okay, great one. So prior to, Sh to Shibuya arc, Nanami was that nigga. Like he was like, okay, Nanami's here, we're safe. It wasn't Gojo because Gojo was that guy, but yeah. it was like the next best thing, right? Yeah. And then it was and we get we see with the Shibuya arc, Nanami dies, and it's like, oh snap. We to the point where it's like, whoa. Grade one's yeah. not enough anymore. And to your, like, what you're saying, in the culling games, we get Yuta, you know, he kind of, you know, really steps up. We get Ma Maki really becomes that girl. We get, yeah. Uh, nah, nah, I think she's that guy. Uh, Kari. And she's that guy? Uh, yeah. I mean, she's not a guy, but I see what you're, Yeah, yeah. But she's, exactly, she's that nigga. She's that guy, right? Yeah. Like, we, between Yuta, uh, Hikari, and, and uh, Maki, mm -hmm. like, those three, I, they're special to me. I'm not even not to me. They're special grades, right? And that's like the level of just that's the bare minimum, like you said, that you, you have to be to compete. Because Yuji and Megumi, they're not that powerful. That's the level they have to minimally surpass. We could uh, definitely should touch upon the characters of the Culling Games too, because there's a lot of them. I think that's uh, mm -hmm. important for us to go over. Hakari, I just love his view on the world. The whole fever thing. The enemies we got, the new enemies, Kashimo, the four way deadlock. Nayoa, you know, I was kind of trash, but he's one of those characters you think are trash. <laughs> they're not a trash character, but you treat them like they're trash. He serves his job. Yeah, yeah. he serves his job. He gets his ass beat a lot. But yeah, yeah I definitely like, love point, the new characters, the sure. new enemies. Definitely love them. You could say Sukuna. I didn't even get a chance to make this video, but it's always been a talk about like, what does he want with Megami? Since episode, what, two? Sukuna was like, I, I have a plan with you, Megami. And yeah. we were just like, what the fuck? What is his plan? Even in the... Shibuya arc. He sent his Megami and goes out of his way to make sure he's all right. Yeah, I can just remember yeah. when the spoilers came out that night. I was reading them and I saw Sukuna takes over and I just assumed it was Yuji. And it said Sukuna takes over Megami. And I read it like three times to make sure and I check other sites just to make sure I wasn't tripping. Megumi? <laughs> so I was like, oh. Yeah, that shit was insane. Oh my time. God. I don't know if I like Sukuna, Shibuya, or the Culling Games more. Mm. Give me color games, Sukuna. Because before that, I think the genius was Kenjaku. But in the color games, we see his plan, and it's up there with like Kenjaku's plan for Shibuya. Yeah. You know what I'm Where once we got the plan for the Shibuya arc, it was like, and this thing is a genius. And we look at Sukuna, it's like, damn, this thing is a genius. So that's just kind of how I view it overall. Are there any new characters we want to touch upon? I touched the bottom a little about Kashimo, and I don't think oh, yeah, Kashimo's Kashimo done. done. He definitely has a role to play. We need to see Kashimo versus Sukuna. I would definitely love to see a Hakari Kashimo tag team versus Sukuna, but I definitely love Kashimo and the role he played in this story. I don't think he was much of a villain or much of a good guy. I think he was just there. He just wanted the smoke. I think there those that fight, Hakari versus Kashimo, it was just pure. Both of them wanted the smoke and both of them got the smoke. Um, I don't think he had much of a story. I think his story might yeah. be something that's featured in the next arc, but definitely loved his introduction. Obviously, we're talking about Nyoa, the four way deadlock. I mean, okay. What other? Angel. Angel, I remember it. Everyone's talking about how she's a new girl on the block. 
I think Gege forgot about no ball. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, yeah, even Yuji was like, I'm not. Yeah, Yuji yeah. was like, I'm not fucking with you, which was yeah, so funny. Like, oh yeah, but sure. yeah, we not, we not. And Gege was like, oh, let me give something to Nobara fans. Yuji said, hey, we're not forgetting about Nobara here. You know, you're not the new girl. But um, and I don't think she's gonna be the new girl. I think we've seen the recent chapter. She said, I can't really fight for anybody no more. I'm kind of weakened. I think she's gonna take a more, a more reduced role. I don't know if we're even gonna see her again after what she did. You know, with the whole Gojo and Link. But um, yeah, I, I I guess I didn't really like or dislike her character. Jacob's ladder was yeah, pretty cool. Kind of there, yeah. Um, not much other characters, but is it safe to say Shibuya takes it, or you think you can make an argument for the Color Games? That's a tough one. I don't think any of the, the new Shibuya characters moved me. I think it was more along lines of the development of the old characters that moved me. I think I'm willing to switch to the Color Games, honestly. I don't know. I like Toto, but I also like Akari. But then we get a lot of Yuta stuff. Like, it's funny because people were talking about Angel and her being the person to upset or take over as Kabara's like role. But if we're gonna keep it a band, Maki is already taking that role to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In the Cullen games, we see she gets that development. I think that's what really makes her stand out as like the third most important character in JJ, like a student in, J in JJK is what I'd say. This is actually gonna be, I don't really wanna bring up Naruto too much, but it's, it's kind of analogy I just thought about. What if the Shibuya is more like the tuning exams and the Culling Games is more of the Sasuke recovery mission when it came to characters? Okay, you say Culling Games is more like Sasuke retrieval arc? Yeah, and then the tuning exams would be the, um, the Shibuya arc. Because when it came to characters, I feel like we saw a lot more of the characters grow in the Sasuke recovery mission. And the tuning exam yeah. is more like, you know, more of a big arc. Introductions. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I can, I definitely see that. I think I see the argument. But yeah, I'm, 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 I'm just hard thinking hard about like curling games. It's uh, hard because you know when you're looking at the, these arcs, a lot of stuff intertwines. If we talked about the plot, which mm -hmm. we brought up a little bit of fights, which we brought up a little bit about moments, and that touched on characters. So the next uh, part we're gonna touch upon is like the impact between the two arcs. This can be combined, but I think impact and build up are like I think that can honestly looking at it that should be like the same section. There was even an episode which was it was really funny where we have the villains of JJK, which is at the time Ghetto jogo all those guys are there and basically they're on a beach and they're like how should we beat this gojo guy right Bro, so it's like yeah. it's, it's, it kind of seemed like very chill on and shit like that i'm calling him getsu because that's what we thought he was at the time it has this big plan and it's like we don't really know what's going on like, but we know a lot of shit's gonna pop i don't think anyone was expecting it to boom like as, as big as it did but we can talk about it. what are your what were your thoughts on the shibuya build up it was definitely an amazing build up because i feel like with some of these arcs that i've been showing in you know that you know it's building up and then you feel like reach the arc you go from this low to high but with shibuya i felt like it kind of took the reader with them like i told you it's just like a big story it kind of took the reader with you guys up the hill up to that big peak i definitely think the build up was amazing we had a great fight with mecha maru versus mojito um we, had, we saw Gojo coming, and there was definitely multiple instances where it said, hey, something's going on here. Something's going on here. This is abnormal. This is abnormal. But it wasn't like they were saying, oh, yeah, something's about to happen. Something's going on here. This is wrong. There were just little tidbits here and there, and it kind of took the reader onto it, kind of hinted the reader out and pushed him in the direction of a buildup. But um, the calling games build up. I really don't want to hate on the calling games because I don't want to call it an information <laughs> one, But let's be honest. There was like two, three chapters stretch where they were just information. Just read, 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 and read. And then, boom, you're in the calling games. I think, like, when we talk about build-up, I think it's a little unfair because Shibuya, like we said, had multiple arcs of building up. Right? This Gojo plan or whatever was touched upon. The mole in JJK. That was a big thing, even if you're in anime only. A lot of the build-up was as early as, like, JJK Season 1 in the anime. Yeah. Right? You have that beat scene where they're talking about beating Gojo. Like, they're talking about this plan. You have, like you said, there's the mole in JJK. I think that was like the beat. That's like the first tournament arc they had. They touched upon like there might be a mole in JJK and, and Gojo's like, oh, I wonder who that is type shit. Like we get all those little pieces and it all comes to flourishing in the Shibuya arc. But to have an arc that big with like the buildup, it takes a while. And I think Culling Games is build up for a future arc. So I think just in terms of buildup, Shibuya arc is just going to have it, if that makes sense. Like I said, it, it's, it's honestly not in there at the point. It, it takes Shibuya. And I don't want to go into like each different individual moment of Shibuya. I think we've done enough of that in this video. I definitely think the reason why yeah. Shibuya takes a cake with the impact is just because the shift of the story. Like I said, honestly, like the character, there was a new cast of characters in the Cullen Games in Shibuya. It felt like a different type of story because of the impact of the Shibuya arc. Um, 
honestly, when I look at it, it's like night and day when it comes to calling him Shibuya. Because we were introduced to these cast of characters. Like you said, the villains were on a beach talking about what we're going to do with Gojo. You're not going to see that past Shibuya. You're not going to see them in the school setting past Shibuya. You're not going to see them chill and hang out around yeah. like we used to do. That was the impact of the Shibuya arc. The Shibuya arc turned the story upside down and truly made it more yeah. of a darker tone series because this was one of the, I don't know, I wouldn't say few shonen arcs, but the villains took the cake in the Shibuya arc easily. Yeah, they won. The, the yeah, villains they won. won. Like, they, they like legitimately they won. won. Yeah, and I, and, think yeah, like, I didn't even see, think about um, that uh, aspect too. I think we see a little bit of this too in My Hero Academia's war arc. I don't know if you caught up My Hero Academia, but they kind of do the same thing or similar thing like JJK where they just flip the series and the tone of the series the pace of the series and it just flipped on his head just because of that big major moment so when it comes to impact i definitely think shibuya should be credited for its theme shift its tone shift it's just shift of the overall story impact like i said shibuya takes the cake the villains won it put them in power kind of the whole reason we're having the Cullen games arc but um do you want to say anything about the Cullen games impact i mean obviously it's not a finished arc but you can still see something there yeah, uh, I want to. I'm gonna just jump both real quick. You said like the Shibuya arc. This is a point that you talked about that I kind of forgot, I forgot to really push in. JJK prior to Shibuya arc was very like, it was almost like like immature. Like we like the villains are at the beach. Like this like certain shit we don't see in Shibuya anymore, right? Yeah, the villains are at the beach. Go like Gojo's so happy go lucky. Like since then, since the Shibuya arc started. I mean, like look how it started. Like Gojo started killing, started murking niggas, and <laughs> yeah. it was like even Geto was like, yeah. Gojo's Gojo's not like Yuji. He will kill niggas. For the impact of the culling games, I think we have yet to see it because the arc's not over. Yeah. But I think it's gonna shake the fucking world. Like whatever Gojo does, I think that's gonna be a huge impact. I think there's a lot to be done for the impact of, of the culling games, and it's a little yeah. premature in that sense. Uh, it's unfortunate because we have not finished it. If done correctly, the culling games impact can match what I think the Shibuya impact was. So that's a, I don't know if that's a hot take. That's something I do believe. I definitely think it could match it. I, I still think Shibuya is going to take the cake because Shibuya honestly leaves the story feeling like a whole new different story. Like there was just yeah, a shift, fair. just a giant shift in the story where I think Shibuya, when it came to impact, I mean, like they said, the villains won. You know, it, like I think the Cullen games could probably match it. Like obviously the good guys was kind of taking more control. But I think when it came to like the shift of just like straight up change in the story, the impact of that, I think Shibuya might have Thought the entire story of JJK the biggest impact. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that for sure. But the last section we want to tackle is the peaks. Um, I think Shibuya had maybe what three, four peaks. One being Jogo versus Sukuna, Yugi okay. and Toto versus Mahito. I wouldn't okay. say the adventure sure. that happened after that was was one of the peaks with Yuki pulling up. I think Kenjaku. I, I would call that a peak or Kenjaku doing the soul transfiguration, the end of the arc. Would you call that a peak? Is that a peak? Wait, the, the soul transfiguration? Yeah, Kenjaku what do you mean? When, uh, uh, nah, I think I thought you were going to say the Gojo. To me, a peak was the Gojo shit. Like that was like, like when Gojo got sealed. Yes. Yeah. I feel like I think that was a big I think that's also a big tonal shift to the point earlier, but it just was like Gojo sealed shit and then goji even has a thing like oh yeah they'll they'll handle themselves but then right after we get the scene where kenjaku's like yeah he's wrong like yuta's no gojo there's no other gojo it's like yeah. that's putting you in perspective like you lost the number one guy in the verse and you lost the number one asset in the in the jujitsu kaizen world mm -hmm. you're in trouble and it was just like what the fuck like the good side's main objective in the color games for the most part was to get gojo back because that's how big of an asset he is yeah so i think it's like the gojo gojo ceiling and like defeat he, i mean he wasn't beaten but he was being sealed is kind of defeated so his defeat was a peak so that's for sure like a big thing uh but yeah i think the, are we missing any peaks on that i, think? I mean it's kind of hard to determine what was a peak in shibuya because the arc itself was a peak of the story yeah i, mean, I think i think Koji, like toji yeah. pulling up would you consider that a peak yeah, I think uh maybe instead of peaks we can like it's I guess I guess the like a better uh word for it is more moments. Yeah, yeah. that's the kind of because like I think key moments and moments are like is I think when people think about peaks they think about like the moments. So I think that's like the whole thing. And if we're talking about just like moments, total the total entrance is a moment for sure. Yeah, Yuji's Yuji's at like the lowest he's ever been. He's like sad and all that shit. 
and then Toto's like, "Yo, what's good, nigga? Tee up!" And yeah. he starts teeing up like that. It's it's simply a moment for sure. But one I of my favorite the, of this um, year. peaks. What do you think is wait? If you had to pick a singular peak, what would you say the singular peak was in JJK? I mean Shibuya, Shibuya, S- Shibuya. The singular peak. God, that's actually like because I'm easy to do Toto versus Mahito. Yeah, I think like. Well, uh, what about? Yeah, I, th- I think that. I mean, I think we didn't talk about Sukuna getting like how many? What do you, how many fingers did he hit? He hit like what? Fifteen. He had fifteen. Uh, fifteen. He got the fifteen fingers. Uh, I think he was at like what five? Or, he was at some small ass number before. He basically ate a fuck ton of fingers. Uh, that's a cool moment to talk about. But I think yeah, overall yeah, that's like for sure. I'd say is the peak of, of uh, Shibuya. Well, this is like the last time we saw a black flash right was we get it was in like a triple black flash where it's like if you watch one piece they're like they're all hockey blooming at the same time that's kind of what yeah. black flash kind of gives you they always they always said early on it's funny because since this arc black flashes not haven't happened but like well at least they haven't you know specifically said it but black flash is like a thing where once you do it, it's an attack but also it's like your level of, of understanding shit just increases right mm-hmm. you're, you're a different person and we get like three black flash at the same time and it's like yeah they're they're all they even say like they're all evolving in the fight which is cool ass shit so yeah i I think i wonder what everyone thinks in the comments and stuff when we get there but i think that that's the peak of shibuya okay so i think we've talked about i think we've touched on some of the key moments of shibuya and talked about the peak of shibuya but yeah what about the peak of the color games because i was sitting there thinking about it when you were talking um yeah i personally think it's on i don't think it's clearing everything else but yuki versus kenjaku at that point, that's what really got me hooked into the Cullen games. Because before, the Cullen games was kind of like a string of fights. Just a fight here, fight here, good fight, good fight, great fight, great fight. But once we saw Yuki versus Kenjaku, I felt like that was what the Cullen games was sort of building up to. Obviously, we got the Gojo stuff later. But at that point, I felt like that was... I wouldn't say I thought it was going to be the final part of the arc, but I definitely thought it was going to be the one with the most impact. Because if Yuki beats Kenjaku, obviously, it was also in the end of the Cullen games. If Ken- Kenjaku beat yeah. Yuki... He gets Tengen. We get Kenjaku's plan coming to fruition. So I think when it came to peaks, I would honestly give it to Yuki versus Kenjaku. To me, the Sukuna plan has to be the peak. The Sukuna's plan was built up for longer, a crazier payoff, and some crazy ass shit happens. From the beginning of the series, Yuji has been the host of Sukuna. I thought the series was going to end where we keep giving Naruto comps, but not like maybe some similar where Yuji kind of is going to master Sukuna's power or whatever. I thought that's how it was going to be. Sukuna does not respect Yuji as a host. He slanders him at every given moment. He's always respecting Megumi. He's like, yeah, my plan was to get you at your lowest, and that's like the time. And he takes over Megumi's body. And it's like, what the fuck? Like, I, we are really just dumbfounded at the whole idea of it. I think since the Cullen game started, I kind of jumped in, jumped out kind of thing. I'd, I'd, I'd catch up, fall behind a little bit. But mm-hmm. since that moment, the Megumi, like since that happened, you like, hooked. And I've been hooked. Like I've, I've been reading weekly. Like I'm like, yo, what the hell? I, I think that has to be the peak. But it is cool that we do have different peaks. So um, we can uh, touch upon like other crazy ass moments in the calling games because they're definitely, either yeah, they're definitely a lot more to touch upon. Well, what we've said, do you do you want to consider peaks and moments on different things, or just consider them all moments slash peaks? I think if in in the sense of that, I think there's like one peak and there's a bunch of moments in that sense kind of you know what i'm saying because we were yeah. like what is the one because i think i think this is like one peak and there's a bunch of moments because I me mean, personally i think shibuya takes moments but when it comes to peaks i can definitely lean towards cg yeah okay i think i think that is a uh, thing because i think if we're talking about the biggest moment or the biggest let me stop saying moment the biggest peak the sukuna migimi plan is the biggest peak in jjk mm. it's like to me that's just like whoa what the fuck I even talked about Gojo getting unsealed. That's a big ass moment. I think Shibuya will probably get more votes because like, you have Nanami's death, Nobara's death, uh, Toto, like that shit. But the Cullen games, it's a lot of fights, but we still have like stuff like that. Then we have like the three way domain expansion. Wasn't that a thing with uh, yeah, Yusei or my Definitely. Game? Kashimo, Hikari was a crazy shit. Everything with Sugana since the reveal was crazy shit. That's a moment. Peaks, I'm going Cullen games. Yeah, me too. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. We have Gojo, okay. Sakuna. Three-way dimension. Yeah. It's not like Shibuya doesn't have its peaks, but Sukuna and Gojo definitely are match whatever Shibuya put out. Definitely. 
Um, but I think Shibuya yeah. definitely had bigger bigger moments. You got Toji coming out, Toji and Megumi, their interaction. You got a lot more debts, a lot more very impactful debts that would affect the future of the series. Um, the fights, again, I, we give it to the Culling Games, but he definitely had some pretty good fights with some pretty good character moments. Overall, I think Shibuya had just a lot more s smaller medium things. S Culling Games had the two big things. Uh, Shibuya had more smaller medium moments to the groundwork. Yeah, okay, I, I can agree with that. I, I I can see that line of thinking. These are gonna be the two most compared JJK arcs. Similar to how the tuning exams and the pain arc get like compared. To me, they're so clearly the two best arcs in JJK. It's just you have to compare them. Yeah, overall, we gave plots to Shibuya. We gave fights to Culling Games. We gave characters to was it Culling Games? I think it was the Culling Games. Um, we gave impact to Shibuya, build up to Shibuya, peaks to Culling Games, and moments to shibuya um definitely excited to see what jjk has in store. Uh, obviously i appreciate you basically anime for sliding through uh yeah, definitely look, be on the lookout for more collabs there'll definitely be more coming soon uh mm -hmm. are there any like videos you have in the this video might not gonna lie the, the i'm like really playing our videos so this video will take a while to come out but with like if you have any great foresight on that are there any videos you're like you know having the q any videos you're like preparing to drop or anything like that um me and you were gonna do the Culling Games fights ranked. I went to do Shibuya versus Culling yeah. Games on my channel, but then you hit me up with a collab opportunity. I said, who better to do it when CA Domain? I see a lot of his discussion videos, listen to it in the background, and I just love the discussion he's able to produce with other anime YouTubers. Um, I did some past videos on JJK. I really enjoyed looking back on it. I talked about Hakari yeah. explaining and ranking his power. I plan on doing some discussion on special grade. And examining a lot of the characters in the calling okay. power and how that ranks up to this new scale of power in JJK. But definitely a lot of JJK content coming to my channel. I also do Black Clover 2, kind of bounce off the two of those. But thanks, man, for having me on for real. It's one of my first collabs, my first ever collab and non-scripted on YouTube and enjoyed it for real, man. That's good. Uh, I'm glad that I could be one of the first. I mean, I'm saying obviously not one of the last. That would be great. And honestly, for the Hikari video, I will check that out because I'm not going to lie. I, like I say this all the time. And then Hikari is hard, but I don't remember how his stuff works. So I'm definitely going to look at that video for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. Three minutes to three minutes of video <laughs> time to talk about that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I mean, that. And I, like you said, we're going to touch upon the JJK fights, the tier list. We're, we're, we're ranking, like, we'll be we ranking the, the fights, or you say ranking the fights? In, yeah, um, ranking the fights. Okay. We're perfect. rating that's, it. That's rating it. We're going to rate it. Rate rating it. them, yeah. So that, that'll be fun. Uh, yeah, so just be on the lookout on that. Obviously, if you gonna be in the description and stuff but uh definitely check out isley anime's channel too you know what i'm saying shout out him yeah that's that's really all so i'm saying that's uh well you know saying? yeah he's from both of us so i kind of do this thing in the end of yeah. videos where i just spit out a random hot take and just kind of leave the video okay yeah no nah, we're, we're here for it we're here for it for sure I what's, mean, what's the hot um, take toji's the better father than any of your favorite anime character Toji's the better father. Okay. Toji's the best anime. Soji's the best anime father. Yeah, yeah. Toji's the best anime. Can I can I steal that? Can I Loki steal that? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hot take from every all right, bet, bet. I'm actually Loki definitely gonna steal that. Toji's the best anime, like it doesn't have to be true, it's just a hot take. And uh here here's some since I'm stealing this, I should throw you like what you should do is you should like put in, like the con like do you uh put something in like your description or like um con like do you pin anything in your comments? Um sometimes. What you should do is you should pin the hot take of the day. You should be like hot take of the day. Yeah, that would be like yeah, sure. But um, yeah, so, that's like yeah. Toji's the best uh, anime dad. So on that as this as the video ends. So yeah, that's really all from us though. But have a nice day. Yeah, peace. Okay.